Today, BNFL is a truly international company with a turnover in excess of £1.5 billion, supplying nuclear services to customers in some 14 countries. Historically, the company was created out of the former production group of the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority, UKAEA. UKAEA was originally established to produce plutonium for military weapons just after the Second World War. Two reactors known as atomic piles were constructed at Windscale in West Cumbria. They operated between 1952 and 1957 when they were closed down after a fire. This military program helped demonstrate the energy potential of the nuclear reaction and led to the construction of the world's first commercial-scale civil nuclear power station, called a hall. It was swiftly followed in 1959 by the operation of a sister station at Chapel Cross in southwest Scotland, which is still safely generating electricity 40 years later. These power stations, known as Magnox power stations because of the distinctive type of fuel elements they use, are among 20 similar operating reactors located on eight sites throughout the UK. In 1971, BNFL was established as a commercial company in its own right with the government as its shareholder and gained PLC status in 1984. This change brought greater financial and administrative flexibility and wider opportunities to expand. Since then, BNFL has invested heavily to exploit international commercial opportunities and develop the scientific innovations which are at the heart of its business. BNFL is wholly self-financing, funding all its investment programs from its own cash flow. Between 1971 and 1997, Dividend payments to the government have totaled nearly £555 million, representing an average return of 9.8% on the government's investment in the company. BNFL supplies integrated nuclear services worldwide to markets throughout Europe, Asia and North America. BNFL's recent acquisition of Magnox Electric Shares brings the workforce in the UK to around 16,500. The company's headquarters is at Risley in Cheshire. Further north, near Preston, is the company's Springfield site, which is one of the world's largest manufacturers of nuclear fuel and intermediate products. At Capenhurst, BNFL is dismantling and decontaminating redundant enrichment plants and developing new techniques for the clean-up and subsequent recycling of contaminated metals. Sellafield in West Cumbria is at the heart of BNFL's operations, reprocessing and recycling used fuel from nuclear power stations and manufacturing fuels made from a mixture of uranium and plutonium oxides. It is also home to a series of waste treatment plants and Calder Hall, the world's first commercially run nuclear power station. A further seven Magnox power stations operate in Dumfriesshire, Essex, Somerset, Kent, Gloucestershire, Suffolk and Anglesey. Drigg, four miles south of Sellafield, is operated by BNFL as the UK's disposal site for solid, low-level radioactive waste. This waste comes both from the company's own operations and from other establishments such as radio pharmaceutical manufacturers, hospitals and universities. A purpose-built terminal at Barrow and Furness in Cumbria is BNFL's main port of entry for overseas business. As well as its four global business groups, BNFL owns a number of group companies and new ventures. The range of activities is wide from the design and construction of sophisticated process plant and equipment through environmental clean-up technology to pharmaceutical equipment. Internationally, BNFL has established offices and subsidiary companies throughout the United States and in Tokyo, Beijing, Seoul, Brussels, Paris, Frankfurt and Johannesburg. As global population increases, particularly in developing countries, even with optimistic assumptions for renewables, there could be a shortfall of around 30% in world electricity supply by the year 2050. Moreover, as developing countries burn more fossil fuel, world sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide gases will increase. 
Although solar, wind and wave power, coupled with energy conservation, can play their part, they will not be enough to fill the energy gap and limit the greenhouse gas emissions connected with global climate change. Nuclear power remains the only credible large-scale solution. Today, around one-sixth of the world's electricity is generated by nuclear power, with almost 450 reactors operating commercially. In the UK, around one-third of the energy consumed is from nuclear power stations. BNFL provides a full range of integrated nuclear products and services to power utilities throughout the world. In a fuel cycle market expected to be worth around £20 billion by 2010, BNFL is seeking to capture a significant share. The company's experience and skill in decommissioning redundant nuclear plant and building state-of-the-art facilities to manage nuclear waste is also helping BNFL win business in a global decommissioning and waste management market estimated to be worth hundreds of billions of pounds. The company has already won several large clean-up and decommissioning contracts worth over a billion dollars in total at nuclear sites in the United States. Key markets are well established for the supply of many types of nuclear fuel and fuel products, for recycling and reprocessing and for waste management and decommissioning services. Investment in modern, highly automated plants has enabled the company to win long-term contracts with Japan, Germany, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, as well as with UK power stations. Through its group company, Pacific Nuclear Transport Limited, PNTL, BNFL provides transport services between Japan and Europe. It owns a fleet of purpose-built ships which deliver used nuclear fuel for chemical processing to BNFL's Sellafield site and the French Cap La Argue plant. Increasingly, these ships are also being used to return nuclear waste from Europe to Japan. In non-nuclear fields, through group companies, the drive has been to exploit world-class technology and expertise developed over many years in the fields of robotics and advanced energy systems. The world's first commercial-scale power station, called a hall at Sellafield in West Cumbria, began operating in 1956. It marked the beginning of a new era in electricity generation. Three years later, in 1959, Chapel Cross, a nearly identical station, began operating near Annan in southern Scotland. Each station has four Magnox reactors and associated turbine equipment. Each reactor core is enclosed within a steel pressure vessel and surrounded by a thick concrete shield. The fuel elements are made from uranium metal rods encased in a magnesium alloy can. There are 10,000 elements in each reactor core. Carbon dioxide gas is passed over the hot fuel elements. This carries the heat to heat exchangers where water is turned into steam, which is then fed into a turbine to generate electricity. The two power stations annually generate around 3,000 gigawatt hours of electricity, which is enough to meet the annual needs of a city the size of Leeds. As a comparison, to produce the same amount of electricity by other means, it would take over 44 million tonnes of coal or 26 million tonnes of oil. They are licensed by the Nuclear Installations Inspectorate to operate for up to 50 years and have an impeccable record of safety and efficiency. These stations were prototypes for a further nine Magnox nuclear power stations, which were built across the UK, of which six are still operating. Similar stations were also built at Latina in Italy and at Tokaimura in Japan. To complement Calder Hall, a combined heat and power plant was recently constructed next to the power station. The plant is operated by Fellside Heat and Power Limited, a joint venture between BNFL and Scottish Hydroelectric PLC. It will ensure Sellafield has a long-term supply of steam and electricity, as well as providing approximately 100 megawatts of electricity for Scottish Hydro to sell to customers in England and Wales. The earliest Magnox reactors date back to the 1950s. Because of their continued efficiency, there are still 20 Magnox reactors on eight sites operating today within the UK. 
BNFL manufacture fuel for these reactors at their Springfield site in northwest England. Springfields receives uranium in the form of uranium ore concentrate. It is chemically treated to produce uranium tetrafluoride, which is converted to uranium metal by heating it to 600 degrees Celsius in a furnace with magnesium pieces. The molten uranium falls into a small pot to form a billet. This is cast into rods which are machined, polished and cleaned. The metal fuel rods are then put into magnesium alloy cans. Following rigorous testing to make sure the fuel elements are sealed and pressurized, they're dispatched to the customer for use in a reactor. Magnox fuel production business continues to be important to BNFL and will continue to be so into the next century. Used nuclear fuel from the pioneering Magnox reactors in Britain and overseas has a limited storage period and has to be chemically processed to a stable form. Processing of this fuel has been carried out safely and efficiently by BNFL at Sellafield for over 30 years. Magnox fuel consists of a uranium metal rod approximately one meter long and three centimeters in diameter encased in a magnesium alloy can. On arrival at BNFL's Sellafield site, the fuel elements are transferred from shielded transport flasks into containers. These are then stored in cooling ponds for a minimum of 175 days. As the fuel continues to generate heat, the water provides the required degree of cooling and also shields the workforce from the radiation emitted by the fuel. Storing the fuel also allows much of the short-lived radioactivity to decay. After a specified time, using remote handling techniques, the fuel is moved to a shielded cell where the magnesium alloy casing is peeled off to expose the uranium fuel rods. The fuel rods are loaded remotely into shielded containers and transferred to BNFL's Magnox reprocessing plant. The rods are dissolved in hot nitric acid and the resulting solution is mixed with a solvent. The solution and the solvent separate in a similar way to that of oil and water. Most of the waste products are removed in the water-like layer. The remaining solution containing the uranium and plutonium is treated chemically to separate the two. The process is repeated for further purity. The uranium and plutonium are then available for recycling. So far, over 1,600 tonnes of enriched uranium fuel from Magnox chemical processing has been recycled into new fuel. Of the 40 million cubic metres of solid industrial waste produced by the UK annually, less than 0.05% is nuclear waste, and most of that is only slightly radioactive. Nuclear waste arises when uranium fuel is burnt in a reactor to generate electricity. When it has been in the reactor for about four years, it becomes less efficient due to the build-up of waste in the fuel. Even though the amount of nuclear waste is very small, because it is radioactive, great care is taken when dealing with it. During the past 10 years, BNFL has invested in state-of-the-art radioactive waste treatment plants to handle these materials safely. When used fuel is processed at BNFL's Sellafield site, the waste products are separated from the reusable uranium and the plutonium products. Just 3% of the used fuel is waste. If used fuel is not recycled, the only other short-term option available is to keep it in store above ground. If disposed of, all of the used fuel, including the plutonium, rather than just 3%, becomes waste and the opportunity to recycle is lost. The wastes from recycling operations are categorized according to how radioactive they are. Low, intermediate and high. Like any toxic substance, it is safe when properly managed. There's a misconception that Sellafield is a dustbin for all foreign nuclear waste. Since 1976, all overseas chemical processing contracts give BNFL the option to return waste to overseas customers. One way of doing this is by returning more of the high-level waste instead of the less radioactive but more bulky low- and intermediate-level waste. High-level waste is left when the uranium and plutonium have been removed from used fuel during processing at Sellafield. Processing one tonne of used fuel 
produces about 0.1 cubic meters of high-level waste, which contains around 99% of the radioactivity in the used nuclear fuel. The high-level waste, which is initially a liquid, is first concentrated by evaporation and stored inside double-walled stainless steel tanks inside thick concrete walls. Huge cooling coils inside the tanks maintain the waste at the best temperature. BNFL uses a process called vitrification to deal with the high-level waste. This process turns the liquid waste into dense solid glass blocks, which are very stable and more suitable for long-term storage. The process also reduces the waste's volume to about a third of the original liquid size. The process involves drying the liquid waste to a powder, mixing it with glass-making materials and heating it to a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. The molten mixture is poured into stainless steel containers which look very similar to milk churns and then allowed to solidify. The vitrified waste is then placed in a concrete-lined store pending final disposal in the UK or its return to overseas customers. The quantities of waste produced are very small. If, throughout your lifetime, all the electricity you used were generated by nuclear fuels, the amount of vitrified waste produced could fit into the palm of your hand. Intermediate level waste, made of such things as pieces of fuel containment cans and residues, is much less radioactive than high level waste. Reprocessing one tonne of used nuclear fuel produces about one cubic metre of intermediate level radioactive waste, but this contains only about 1% of the total radioactivity in the used fuel. BNFL operates automated plants at Sellafield which safely process this waste into cement inside stainless steel containers about the size of an oil drum. The Magnox encapsulation plant treats the pieces of fuel containment can which have been stripped away from the metal fuel rods before being processed. A second plant, the Wastes encapsulation plant, treats mainly solids and slurries from the thermal oxide reprocessing plant, Thorpe. Such waste consists mostly of the pieces of steel tubes or zircaloy pins which are left once the used fuel has been dissolved during processing. The basic process for encapsulation is essentially the same at all plants. To treat dry solids, a wet cement mixture is pumped into stainless steel containers holding the waste. The drum is vibrated to aid filling before being sealed. For slurry wastes, dry cement powder is added directly to the drum and mixed in. Because the wastes are held in solid form, the radioactivity is kept within the solid cement structure. The drums are placed into a purpose-built store of concrete construction, where they can be kept in a controlled environment for long-term storage or pending permanent disposal in a repository. Low-level radioactive waste, whether in solid, liquid or gaseous form, contains only small amounts of radioactivity. Reprocessing one tonne of used nuclear fuel produces about four cubic metres of solid low-level waste, which contains just one thousandth of one percent of the radioactivity in used fuel. BNFL's solid low-level waste includes protective clothing, paper towels and air filters. However, hospitals also produce radioactive low-level waste, as do some industries and research establishments. Wherever necessary, the solids are first compacted in BNFL's compaction plant at Sellafield and packed into steel disposal containers. Then it is sent to the UK's low-level waste disposal site at Drigg, four miles south of Sellafield. Cement is added to the containers, following which they're placed in a concrete-lined vault. When the vault is full, it will be covered and landscaped. The site is extensively monitored to make sure there is no danger to people or the environment. BNFL has recently completed a 10-year investment program to reduce the radioactivity in the liquid it discharges to sea from its Sellafield site. Today, these discharges are almost below levels of detection and less than 1% of their peak in the 1970s. To put the discharges into context, 
these members of the public living close to the Sellafield site and who are most exposed to our discharges received a radiation dose from the site during 1996, which was equivalent to that received when taking a return flight from the UK to the Far East. When you fly at altitude, you get more radiation from the sun. Low-level liquid waste is mainly water, which cools the used fuel prior to processing. Once treated to lower its radioactivity, it can be safely discharged into the sea. BNFL uses a combination of techniques to provide the most effective, practicable cleanup. In the site ion exchange effluent plant, 6EP, the water is fed through sand beds to remove solid particles and then through a clay-like resin which chemically removes radioactive cesium and strontium. The enhanced actinide removal plant, ERP, neutralizes and cleans the acidic liquids from the main process. The result is clean water which can be released safely into the sea. The radioactivity removed is sent as a slurry to the associated encapsulation plant to be treated and stored as an intermediate level waste. Low level gaseous waste is treated by specially designed equipment such as electronic precipitators, scrubbers, chemical cleanup systems, and highly efficient filters. All discharges from BNFL sites are subject to stringent independent regulatory controls and consents in accordance with international rules. Nuclear fuel is used in power stations to generate electricity. The fuel stays in the power station's reactors for over five years. After this time, waste products have built up in the fuel, making it less efficient. But only a small amount of the fuel is actually burned up. So BNFL carries out chemical processing to separate the waste products, about 3%, from the uranium, about 96%, and plutonium, about 1%. The recovered uranium and plutonium can then be recycled into new fuel for modern power stations. Recycling just one ton of used fuel provides as much energy as at least 100,000 barrels of oil. Without chemical processing, all of this valuable energy would be wasted. To date, BNFL has processed almost 40,000 tons of used nuclear fuel, which is more than any other commercial organization in the world. Recycled into new fuel, it can generate enough electricity to meet all of the UK's electricity needs for about two years. Fuel recycling operations are a significant part of BNFL's annual turnover and a major source of export earnings for the UK. Recycling also allows us to conserve the world's uranium supplies. If used fuel is not recycled, the only other short-term option available is to keep it in stores above ground. After storing the used fuel, a decision still has to be made on whether to recycle it or dispose deep underground. All the used fuel, including the plutonium, rather than just the 3% waste, then becomes an unused resource if it is disposed of. Throughout the world, a number of major electricity generating companies in countries like the UK, Japan and continental Europe have opted for the environmental benefits of recycling. Later generations of reactors, such as advanced gas-cooled and light water reactors, run on fuels of higher energy efficiency made from uranium oxide. The energy potential of oxide fuel is enormous. Just one pellet of light water reactor fuel has the energy equivalent of one and a quarter tons of coal. BNFL manufactures some 300 tons of oxide fuels each year, meeting the demands of 140 power stations worldwide. At Springfields in northwest England, the company operates one of the most advanced and highly automated oxide fuel production plants in the world, the Oxide Fuels Complex. The plant integrates all the processes involved in producing finished fuel assemblies under one roof. The first step is the conversion of uranium, which has first been enriched to raise its energy efficiency, into uranium oxide powder using a unique process called the integrated dry route. The powder is then conditioned to produce granules which are pressed into pellets. These are hardened by heating and machined to the exact size required. The pellets are loaded into pins, stainless steel for advanced gas-cooled reactor, AGR fuel, and zircaloy for light water reactor, LWR fuel. 
the pins are assembled into clusters to form full elements. One LWR element, or assembly, is made up of 264 pins, each pin containing around 250 pellets. The demand for high-quality, cost-effective nuclear fuel is providing further opportunities for BNFL. One of the fuels to be developed on a commercial scale by BNFL is mixed oxide or MOX fuel, a highly efficient nuclear fuel made from a mixture of uranium and recycled plutonium oxides. This fuel can be used in many types of modern reactors. Plutonium is a valuable energy resource. It is produced as a byproduct when uranium fuels are burnt in a reactor. Previously, it had no commercial value, but by chemically processing the used fuel, it can be recovered and recycled into MOX fuel. When MOX is burnt in a light water reactor, the overall amount of plutonium is reduced. In the same way, military stockpiles of plutonium could also be turned into MOX fuel to generate electricity in civil nuclear power plants, a true conversion of what were once swords into plowshares for peaceful use. To produce MOX fuel assemblies, uranium and plutonium powders are blended together and then pressed into pellets. The pellets are hardened by heating and then ground to a precise measurement. The pellets are stacked into fuel pins which are clustered together to form fuel assemblies. MOX fuel is made up of around 94% uranium oxide and 6% plutonium oxide. BNFL and its predecessors have been producing MOX fuels for more than 30 years and a small-scale MOX demonstration facility at Sellafield has already supplied MOX fuel to European customers. Following this initiative, a commercial-scale MOX fuel production plant has been designed and constructed by BNFL's engineers at Sellafield utilising a unique patented process. Because it is more efficient than other nuclear fuels, MOX fuel can offer certain reactor operators considerable savings. These could amount to as much as £50 million over the lifetime of a new reactor. The start of operations in BNFL's thermal oxide reprocessing plant, Thorpe, heralded a new era of recycling operations for BNFL. Thorpe has been designed to process used fuel from the UK's more modern advanced gas-cooled reactors, AGRs, and from UK and overseas light water reactors, LWRs. It combines all of the facilities necessary for recycling nuclear fuel under one roof. It enables used fuel to enter the plant at one end and the separated uranium and plutonium to be taken out at the other, then into the nearby MOX plant for manufacturing into new fuel. The plant will reprocess around 7,000 tonnes of used oxide fuel during the first decade of operation. The first 10 years of Thorpe's capacity and around 60% of its second 10 years is already committed with advance orders worth several billion pounds from customers in the UK, Europe and Japan. The plant separates the small volume of highly active waste, about 3%, from the valuable uranium and plutonium, which can be recycled into new fuel for use in modern nuclear power stations. The used fuel is transported to Stellarfield in extremely robust transport flasks. On arrival, the fuel is taken to the Thorpe Receipt and Storage Facility where it is stored in stainless steel containers in cooling ponds. This is to allow short-lived radioactivity to decay. The fuel from the ponds is moved via a channel to another pond, where it is placed onto a carriage, which moves the fuel up a chute into a shear machine, where it is chopped into small pieces and then dissolved in hot nitric acid. Specially developed pulsed columns separate the materials by mixing the nitric acid solution with a solvent. The nitric acid solution and the solvent separate in a similar way to that of oil and water. Most of the waste products are removed in the water-like layer. The remaining solution containing the uranium and plutonium is treated chemically to separate the two. The process is repeated for further purity. The uranium and plutonium are then available for recycling. BNFL is one of the largest suppliers of intermediate products used in the fuel manufacturing process. Those products include uranium hexafluoride, or HEX, the key raw material used for producing enriched uranium oxide fuels, which are used in advanced gas-cooled and light water reactors. 
Hex enrichment involves partially separating the two isotopes of uranium that occur in nature, uranium-235 and uranium-238. Uranium-235 is more important in the fission process because it creates heat in a reactor. By spinning uranium hexafluoride gas at high speed in a centrifuge, the uranium-238 atoms can be partially separated and removed. By doing this many times, the required enrichment is achieved, typically to between three and six times the natural level of uranium-235. Once enriched, HEX is returned to Springfields and converted to uranium dioxide powder inside BNFL's oxide fuels complex. This is done using the integrated dry root process, a unique, simpler and more efficient process developed at Springfields. It is a single-stage kiln process in which enriched HEX is converted directly to uranium dioxide powder by reaction with steam and hydrogen. Finally, uranium dioxide powder is manufactured into fuel pellets ready for dispatch to the customer. BNFL manufactures and supplies a range of nuclear fuels and intermediate products to all UK power stations and some 140 power stations worldwide. It is a business based at Springfields near Preston and accounts for around 15% of the company's annual turnover. Just one pellet of uranium oxide fuel designed for light water reactors has the energy equivalent of one and a quarter tons of coal. For some 50 years, BNFL and its predecessors have developed the expertise to manufacture fuel for all types of nuclear reactors. Uranium metal fuel used in the pioneering Magnox reactors and uranium oxide fuel used in the more modern advanced gas-cooled reactors and light water reactors. BNFL also supplies intermediate fuel products like uranium hexafluoride or HEX. This material can be enriched to increase its energy potential, making more efficient nuclear fuel. This enrichment is undertaken by Urenco Limited, a company with headquarters in Marlow, which is jointly owned by BNFL and Dutch and German partners. It operates three sites in Europe, at Capenhurst in the UK, at Almelo in the Netherlands, and at Gronau in Germany. Looking to the future, BNFL is set to widen its fuel manufacturing business. A plant has been built at Sellafield to manufacture highly efficient mixed oxide or MOX fuel, an advanced fuel that uses a mixture of uranium and plutonium oxides which are recycled from used nuclear fuel. The growth of BNFL's business has been based upon its world-leading science and technology know-how. The company's landmark achievements emphasize the benefits of sustained investment, amounting to some £75 million per year in research, development and commercial implementation. BNFL is amongst the country's top companies investing in research and development. Particular emphasis is given to improving the efficiency, safety and effectiveness of current operations, developing and improving fuel products, fuel services and the energy systems of the future, reducing the environmental impact of industrial processes and waste streams, developing related products in non-nuclear fields, and establishing joint research partnerships with industries and countries throughout the world. BNFL is committed to substantial investment in scientific research and leading-edge technologies in both nuclear and related fields. At the Development Centre at Springfields near Preston, work is focused on a range of development programmes designed to create long-term improvements to BNFL's products and services. A product development team has been established at Capenhurst near Chester to exploit BNFL's leading-edge technology in a variety of new applications, some of which may have benefits outside the nuclear world. The majority of research work takes place at Sellafield, which has the major role of generating new and sustainable technologies. The main focus of Sellafield's research work is in the areas of fuel recycling, waste management and decommissioning redundant plants. Remotely operated equipment is used in many of BNFL's facilities to handle the potentially hazardous radioactive materials. This equipment comes in various types, from mechanically linked devices 
to teleoperated electric or hydraulic power manipulators or robots which can twist and turn many ways. These allow the operator to carry out routine work and more challenging tasks with ease. For instance, two challenging tasks are in a radioactive cell in one of BNFL's older reprocessing plants. The first involves rearranging the location of some pipework to clear access for the second task, the remote diversion of a larger pipe. In the first task, a hydraulic manipulator used several types of tools including shears, grinders and croppers. The manipulator had to leave the pipework in an operational state but not leave any debris in the cell. The second task was to divert pipes which carry highly active liquid waste from reprocessing operations to a newly refurbished part of the plant. Sellafield R&D also provides technical support for the enhanced actinide removal plant, which significantly reduces discharges of radioactive materials into the Irish Sea. The vitrification plant on the Sellafield site is where the high-level liquid waste is converted to a solid glass-like form. Before the plant was constructed, Sellafield R&D developed and built a full-scale pilot vitrification plant which actually produced 70 tonnes of simulant glass. This project significantly reduced the commissioning timescales. One of BNFL's primary concerns is the protection of the environment. BNFL has a company environmental policy and as part of this policy it has introduced targets and implemented wide-ranging measures to reduce the environmental effects of its operations to the minimum practicable level. Major initiatives currently include the development and maintenance of appropriate auditable company-wide environmental management systems. These are being implemented at each site to meet international standards. Over the years Discharges of the principal radioactive substances to the Irish Sea from Sellafield have been reduced to less than 1% of peak levels, well below regulatory limits, by a huge investment in new waste treatment plants. Regular environmental monitoring is carried out in the areas local to the company's operating sites. BNFL tests fish, shellfish and other materials such as shoreline mud, vegetation and seaweed. Government organisations such as the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, the Environment Agency and other independent organisations like the Radiological Protection Institute of Ireland also carry out independent analysis and publish their results. Put in perspective, the radiation dose from Sellafield's operations to the most exposed members of the public who live near the site is typically less than 10% of the average dose to the UK population from natural and medical sources. In 1996, the most exposed members of the public living close to Sellafield received a radiation dose from the site which was equivalent to that received when taking a return flight from the UK to the Far East. Non-radiological impact on the environment is also rigorously controlled. BNFL has already received certification to the British standard BS7750 at Springfields and has a programme in place to achieve certification for their other operating sites during 1997. BNFL takes every possible measure to safeguard employees, local communities and the general public. Local liaison committees have been formed from people from all walks of life living near BNFL sites. Their job is to reassure the communities around the sites that there are people who care about the environment, their way of life and the local economy. Together, the committee members have the knowledge and technical expertise to discuss in depth events at their local BNFL site. BNFL is committed to an ongoing program of community investment and involvement covering economic regeneration, education, academia, charitable giving and sponsorship. The programme is mainly aimed at the communities surrounding our operating sites in northwest England and the Scottish borders. Through enterprise activities, the company has established its own business development fund to provide investment in new and existing small to medium-sized technology-based businesses. Over £16 million are being invested by the year 2000 in the economic regeneration of West Cumbria. BNFL has worked with the West Cumbria Partnership the Rural Development Commission and the European Regional Development Fund to create in Westlakes a centre for research and knowledge-based businesses. 
Westlake's growing links with universities, both in the UK and worldwide, bring academic recognition to West Cumbria's scientific and technological capabilities. Company initiatives provide sustained support in primary, secondary and tertiary education. From resource packs to the funding of university posts, contract research and studentships. In the areas of charitable giving and sponsorship, support is centred upon activities and organisations concerned with many of today's social issues, as well as grassroots sport and the arts. This approach involves both the company and its employees in work with the rehabilitation of young offenders, drug education, the homeless, inner city regeneration and the elderly. BNFL is also proud to be associated with the Prince's Trust. Particular involvement is with the Prince's Trust Volunteers Programme, aimed at encouraging the personal development of young people. Through secondment, a growing number of our employees are being given the opportunity to develop their leadership skills. Wherever possible, BNFL's involvement in the community in which it operates is one of partnership where mutual benefit is the aim. The safety, health, training and development of its workforce and care for the environment are top priorities for BNFL. In simple terms, good safety is good business, as far as BNFL is concerned. Comprehensive safety and health procedures are in place and monitored to protect all BNFL employees while they work. The company's firmly rooted safety culture has led to rigorous safeguards and procedures to keep all nuclear materials secure and to ensure any new processes take safety issues into account from day one. Stringent processes and controls are in place to ensure all radiological and non-radiological environmental impacts are reduced to a practicable minimum. The company's ongoing investment in training and development the safety and health of the workforce and in environmentally sound processes makes BNFL a leader in these areas where the aim is continuous improvement to achieve world-class performance. BNFL has a formal policy covering the safety and health of both its workforce and the general public. The company considers that no activity is more important than safety and is aiming to become world-class not only in radiological safety, where the company's reputation is unsurpassed, but also in conventional safety, where more work remains to be done. All employees are entitled to a high standard of occupational health care and are offered regular medical health checks in line with the best practices across British industry. Over the last few years, both collective and average radiation doses to employees across all sites have fallen significantly. An important contributory factor is the development and application of measures designed to improve individual awareness of radiation exposure and methods to reduce such exposures. The average radiation dose of a Sellafield worker is now less than 2 millisieverts per year. This can be put into context when comparing it with the average natural radiation dose of 7.8 millisieverts for a person living in Cornwall. This is due to the higher concentrations of natural radiation in Cornwall. Health and safety procedures are monitored constantly and systems are in place at all of the company's sites and at every stage of operations. There are also emergency procedures in place which are tested and reviewed regularly. As with all other licensed nuclear sites in the UK, spot checks are carried out by the Nuclear Installations Inspectorate to ensure the company meets the strict health and safety requirements laid down by the government. Through some 40 years' experience of major construction projects, BNFL Engineering has developed an unequalled range of skills and techniques, designing and building plant and equipment for fuel manufacture, chemical processing, waste management and decommissioning. Designed and built by BNFL Engineering, the Oxide Fuels Complex at Springfields near Preston embodies the highest standards of technology available. It integrates under one roof all of the production processes for Oxide Fuels and intermediate products. Its design includes a high degree of automation, reducing operator involvement and delivering significant production economies. The thermal oxide reprocessing plant, Thorpe, 
was first conceived in 1974 when BNFL saw the need for an oxide fuel processing facility to gain a share of future world demand. Processing recovers around 97% of the used fuel for recycling as new fuel. Safety, high reliability and low maintenance were the key design criteria. For example, extensive use was made of stainless steel for its corrosion resistance and ease of decontamination. And wherever possible, the movement of liquids is by power fluidics, which does not need moving parts. Designed to convert high-level liquid waste into a solid glass-like form, the vitrification plant at Sellafield presented unique design and construction challenges to BNFL's engineers. For instance, to satisfy seismic and radiological requirements, 600 individual pre-cast concrete units were used to construct the main cell areas of the plant. BNFL's engineers also designed and built a suite of plants to encapsulate the different categories of intermediate level radioactive waste into cement. Encapsulation takes place inside heavily shielded concrete cells to ensure maximum operator protection, whilst all in-cell equipment operates remotely or automatically. A new dry pack plant is being constructed at Sellafield to enhance the current treatment of intermediate level waste by separating, drying and supercompacting it before it is encapsulated. The waste treatment complex has been designed to process all types of plutonium contaminated waste into a form for long-term storage at a minimum volume. Another plant at Sellafield, the Waste Monitoring and Compaction Plant, receives low-level solid waste and compacts it to at least a quarter of its original volume. BNFL's engineers have successfully completed a complex of effluent treatment plants designed to further reduce the radioactive content of discharges into the Irish Sea. Over the last 15 years, BNFL's engineers have decommissioned many different types of nuclear facilities, including reactors, fuel production and chemical processing facilities, and storage ponds. In the early 90s, BNFL decommissioned the university's research reactor at Risley in northwest England, which had been fueled with highly enriched uranium. The project was completed to time and budget, and the land has since been delicensed for other commercial use. The first delicensing of a total site in the UK under the Nuclear Installations Inspectorate new regulations. BNFL has successfully completed a diverse range of engineering projects at its UK sites, covering all aspects of fuel production, processing, waste management, and the cleanup and decommissioning of redundant plant. During the last 10 years, the company has also completed more than £5 billion worth of major projects at Sellafield and for customers in the European Community, Japan, and the Pacific Rim, and more recently in the former Eastern Bloc. BNFL's designers use the most up-to-date design techniques available, including Integrated Computer-Aided Design CAD, and Computer-Aided Engineering CAE, systems. Powerful computing facilities are used for mathematical modeling, process simulation and testing. Virtual reality simulation is used to study the human factors of design, allowing modifications to be made before embarking on the actual construction. All these result in substantial cost reductions throughout the design, construction and plant operation stages. An integral part of the life cycle of any nuclear facility is its decommissioning when it comes to the end of its useful life. It is a process which turns a redundant nuclear facility back to a state where the site and buildings or land are available for alternative use. It involves removing and processing residual nuclear material, decontaminating and removing plant and equipment, and disposing of or recycling waste. Since the opening of Calder Hall nuclear power station in 1956, the nuclear industry has undergone dramatic changes. Many of the early nuclear installations and research facilities are now nearing the end of their useful lives. Also, with the ending of the Cold War, many nuclear facilities in the UK and overseas associated with defence are now redundant. It is estimated that about 250 nuclear facilities will need to be decommissioned by the year 2010. The decommissioning of these facilities in a manner that is not only safe and cost-effective, but also publicly acceptable, 
is of crucial importance for the nuclear industry. BNFL has successfully decommissioned many of these older nuclear facilities, including reactors, fuel production and chemical processing facilities, fuel storage ponds and material recovery areas. Today, the company is recognized by countries all over the world as a leading expert in the decommissioning field. It is a market worth hundreds of billions of pounds, which will help to secure BNFL's profitability well into the future. BNFL has unrivaled operational experience in the decommissioning of nuclear plant and facilities in the UK and provides customers with a fully integrated service. Each decommissioning project brings with it its own unique challenges, requiring a different approach. This might range from simple hands-on to a totally remote handling operation. Very often, the most cost-effective solution requires a skillful integration of both. Numerous decommissioning projects are currently being handled by BNFL in the UK. Most visible of these is the dismantling of the 125 meters high pile chimneys on the Sellafield site. The chimneys were used to ventilate the original nuclear reactors, which were constructed at the end of the Second World War to produce military material for the nuclear weapons program. These were shut down in 1957 after a fire in one of the reactors. A decision was made in the mid-1980s to remove the upper 30-meter section, which contains the filters. A manipulator with closed-circuit television was developed to cut away the insulation and feed the contaminated waste material into a waste packing machine. BNFL is also decommissioning Sellafield's first fuel processing plant, which was built in the 1950s and was used to recover plutonium from the fuel used in the wind-scale atomic piles. The plant is 61 metres high, with two reprocessing lines. Most of the plant items are far too bulky to be removed in one piece, so they're being cut into manageable pieces and will be treated as either low or intermediate level waste. In 1982, BNFL began decommissioning redundant uranium enrichment plant at the Capenhurst site. By the end of the project, over 7,000 tonnes of high-grade aluminium will have been cleaned and returned to the metals market for unrestricted use. The project is receiving considerable international interest. In 1992, BNFL began decommissioning the university's research reactor at Risley in northwest England. The reactor was fueled with highly enriched uranium and began operation in 1962. The project was completed to time and budget, and in 1996, the land was delicensed and made available for other commercial use. This project marks the first de-licensing of a total nuclear site in the UK under the new Nuclear Installations Inspectorate regulations. Because of its operational experience, the BNFL decommissioning team are in considerable demand worldwide. The United States, in particular, has a legacy of contaminated plant from its nuclear weapons program, dating back to the early 1950s. BNFL Inc., the company's North American group company, is currently working on a number of significant decommissioning projects worth over $1 billion for the U.S. government. One is at Rocky Flats in Colorado, where for almost 40 years, parts for nuclear weapons were manufactured before production finished in 1992. In conjunction with American partners, work is being carried out on a decommissioning project to convert some of the weapons complex into a scrap metals recycling facility to manufacture waste storage containers and other products. A contract has been won at the massive Savannah River nuclear site in South Carolina. BNFL Inc. are part of a consortium of companies whose task is to manage solid waste on the site. BNFL Inc. is also working for the U.S. Department of Energy at its Hanford site in Washington State, initially to treat 55 million gallons of liquid radioactive waste presently stored on the site in steel tanks. A BNFL Inc.-led consortium has won a further contract which will involve designing, building and operating a waste treatment facility at one of America's former weapons research and design sites, the Idaho National Energy Laboratory. Outside the US, BNFL is focusing on the next largest decommissioning opportunities in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union. 
BNFL has transported fuel products and materials around the world since the 1960s. Operating one of the largest road, rail and sea networks in the industry, BNFL has completed over 15 million incident-free miles transporting radioactive materials. BNFL has a fleet of six specially designed ships and even has its own trains, which provide a safe and reliable transport route between Sellafield and BNFL's purpose-built terminal at Barrow-in-Furness in Cumbria. And with nearly five decades of experience of hazardous goods transportation on a global scale, the Springfields road fleet can claim an impressive safety record. BNFL provides customers with a comprehensive range of services, from the planning and documentation of consignments to the supply and maintenance of transport containers and flasks. BNFL operates a comprehensive road and rail transport service for radioactive and other hazardous materials. With nearly 50 years' experience of transporting hazardous goods on a global scale, covering 11 million miles on road and rail, BNFL's transport services claim an impressive safety record with no breaches of containment. Once in transit, an efficient communication system maintains contact between the transport carrier and the control centre at BNFL. BNFL also operates one of the first private rail freight operations in the UK, transporting used nuclear fuel between BNFL's Barrow Terminal and Sellafield. BNFL trains also transport solid low-level waste from Sellafield to its drig disposal site four miles south of Sellafield, as well as bulk chemicals from North Cheshire to Sellafield. PNTL, a group company of BNFL with Japanese and French shareholders, transports nuclear material by sea between Europe and Japan using five purpose-built ships. Used fuel from Japan, destined for recycling, is transported to either Barrow in Furness in Cumbria or Cap La Argue near Cherbourg in France. The ships also transport high-level waste back to Japan. BNFL owns a further ship, which specifically services European customers. On arrival at Barrow, used fuel is taken by rail to Sellafield for processing, which enables uranium and plutonium to be recovered and recycled into new fuel for reuse. Over the last 30 years, the fleet of six ships have completed over four million incident-free miles without a single accident resulting in the release of radioactivity. Over 8,500 tonnes of fuel have been shipped to date. This has the energy equivalent of around 260 million tonnes of oil. PNTL fleet's impressive safety features include double-skinned hulls, double engines, separate cargo holds with radiation shielding, cargo cooling, fire protection and radiation monitoring devices. The electrical distribution systems are based on seven independent generators. And there are two sets of navigational and communication equipment with automatic satellite tracking. In 1993, the International Maritime Organization, IMO, introduced new regulations for all ships carrying nuclear cargoes. All ships owned by BNFL are classified as INF-3, the highest safety rating for any ship carrying radioactive materials. The containers, which hold the used fuel, are known as flasks or casks. They weigh up to 110 tonnes each and are made from steel or a combination of steel and lead to internationally set standards. The flasks protect the workers and the public against radiation. BNFL inspects flasks before fuel is loaded at the customer's power station. They're checked again after being emptied at Sellafield. Regular maintenance is carried out with a major overhaul every six years. In an extreme emergency, like a serious fire, it would be possible to completely flood all of the holes of our purpose-built ships without sinking them. However, if the worst were to happen and a ship were to sink, each one has sophisticated onboard sonar locating equipment, so it could be more easily detected and its cargo recovered. To make sure transporting radioactive material is safe, the design of all transport containers operated by BNFL follows rules laid down by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Flask tests have been devised to simulate the most severe stresses that would occur in an accident. These include drop, fire, impact, 
and pressure tests.